Listen and practice. Not guilty. Going through the customs is a tiresome business. The strangest thing about it is that really honest people are often made to feel guilty. The hardened professional smuggler, on the other hand, is never troubled by such feelings, even if he has 500 gold watches hidden in his suitcase. When I returned from abroad recently, a particularly officious young customs officer clearly regarded me as a smuggler. Have you anything to declare? He asked, looking me in the eye. No, I answered confidently. Would you mind unlocking this suitcase, please? Not at all, I answered. The officer went through the case with great care. All the things I had packed, so carefully were soon in a dreadful mess. I felt sure I would never be able to close the case again. Suddenly, I saw the official's face light up. He had spotted a tiny bottle at the bottom of my case, and he pounced on it with delight. Perfume, eh? He asked sarcastically. You should have declared that perfume is not exempt from import duty. But it isn't perfume, I said. It's hair oil. Then I added with a smile, it's a strange mixture I make myself die as I expected. He did not believe me. Try it, I said encouragingly. The officer unscrewed the cap and put the bottle to his nostrils. He was greeted by an unpleasant smell, which convinced him that I was telling the truth. A few minutes later, I was able to hurry away with precious chalk marks on my baggage. Listen and practice. Life on a desert island. Most of us have formed an unrealistic picture of life on a desert island. We sometimes imagine a desert island to be a sort of paradise where the sun always shines. Life there is simple and good. Ripe fruit falls from the trees, and you never have to work. The other side of the picture is quite the opposite. Life on a desert island is wretched. You either starve to death or live like Robinson Crusoe, waiting for a boat which never comes. Perhaps there is an element of truth in both these pictures. But few of us have had the opportunity to find out. Two men who recently spent five days on a coral island wished they had stayed there longer. They were taking a badly damaged boat from the Virgin Islands to Miami to have it repaired. During the journey, their boat began to sink. They quickly loaded a small rubber dinghy with food, matches, and tins of beer and rowed for a few miles across the Caribbean till they arrived at a tiny coral island. There were hardly any trees on the island and there was no water, but this did not prove to be a problem. The men collected rain water in the rubber dinghy, as they had brought a spear gun with them. They had plenty to eat. They caught lobster and fish every day, and, as one of them put it, ate like kings. When a passing tanker rescued them five days later, both men were genuinely sorry that they had to leave. Thanks for your listening.